Welcome back to I and I Studio. It's Diane Williams, and if you've been following our Meditations on Art series, um, you'll know that I am embarking on a large series of paintings. Um, there are 11 panels, and I have three unstretched canvases that will probably uh, become a part of this series at some time as well. So today I want to talk about the stages of painting. We've gone through the preparation stages. You can go back and watch the videos on prepping the panels with the polymer medium gloss first, then the gesso taping the sides. Now the fun part begins and that's the actual painting. So when you're painting, there are stages of the process, and the first stage is very free and fun. You're putting down marks anywhere you want without worrying about the outcome. It's really freeing, and it's very fun. The problem is getting attached to your marks too early. And the three paintings behind me are an example of just that. I have become very attached to these particular marks on these paintings. So um, the other paintings I've worked a little uh, more deeply into already, and these ones I'm kind of avoiding because I sort of like the way they look. And because I have so many to work on, I think that's okay for the time being. I don't want that to hold me up, but I do want to take time to understand what it is about these three that I really like. And I can tell you that it is the boldness of the mark and the contrast. It's the, they are the kind of marks that uh, are un unapologetic marks. They're confident marks. Um, they're holding the space well. They're grabbing attention with the contrast and the boldness. That's what I want the end game to be. But it is not enough to just leave the paint as it is here. It's just not interesting enough. It's very surfacey. So I'm going to have to lose what I have here and then bring it back in some form that works for me. And um, I don't know exactly what that will be. Because I have such a large series that I'm doing, I'm just going around willy-nilly and making marks here, making marks there, putting one on the table, pouring some paint, scraping some paint, observing what I see, putting it back on the wall. And uh, so far, it's, it's really quite a, a liberating process. When I enter the second phase of the painting, I'm going to want to commit to composition and form and color. And that becomes a little more tricky. Um, it can be a process of really uh, blocking out areas that are too noisy, um, creating forms by blocking out around areas, bringing forms out, um, losing entirely what you loved about the painting, recreating it by going back to step one. I've got to go back to the drawing board, and I don't mean by covering up the painting and starting over. I mean by freeing myself up and saying, at this stage, I'm just making marks, and it, it isn't about the composition and the form so much. So, um, Phase one, we're making the marks, we're putting our body into it, it's dancing with the forces that be, the, the muses, uh, if you will. And then we're honing in on composition, and then we're finishing the process, and I've talked about it time and time again. So I'm going to take you on my journey a little bit and show you how I approach some of these steps, and we'll, um, you'll just see it's a long process. I would anticipate these 11 paintings will take me two or three months, um, maybe even more, to get some resolution on. 
um, the three behind me. I'm not sure, you know, what, what happens is you wind up trying to almost outline and preserve what it is you like, um, and that doesn't work either. It's probably going to get to the point that I'm going to say, forget about it, cover it up, recreate it, cover it up, recreate it. The great thing is we have cameras now, cell phones, that we can record our processes. So it's kind of easy to get back to where you were. Another thing a lot of my students do is they'll take a picture of the painting, put it in Procreate, and um, manipulate it in Procreate and say, what if I had a green shape instead of purple? What if the background were red instead of white? And they can kind of very quickly go through scenarios to see what they might want to do. Personally, I do it with a paintbrush. I'll say, what if I turn that green? And I'll turn it green. Uh, I really like that. What if the background were red? Uh, maybe not quite that red. Maybe it needs to be more orangey red, and then I'll go orangey red. The reason that I like that process is because everything I do leaves a trace of what I did. And those traces become pretty important to the whole painting. Often, I will even sand back into the surface to get back to some of those uh, areas and uh, reveal them, bring them up. It's, it's like an excavation. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that with some of the paintings that I'm working on. And um, that will be next week's installment. So I hope that you stay tuned check out uh, what I've got going on, um, watch for the demonstration next week. Thank you for following me. I've had some great communication with y'all, and I hope you keep asking me questions, giving me comments. It's really nice to know that you're there, and um, I really, really appreciate your communication. Please subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you're notified with the new videos. It's very helpful for me. And spread the word. Also, do check out my website. There is a lot of workshops coming up. Um, we have one in New Mexico and one in Sedona in the fall, and I'd love to see you there. We also have uh, online small group mentorships forming right now. So if you're interested in intimate small groups, these are four people uh, in a group. We meet once a week for an hour and a half. We talk about everything art related in the way of applying to shows, website, what do you think of this, what do you think of that, and then look at the artwork. When you get four people giving an opinion about the artwork, it's very helpful. You learn to see through other people's eyes, which helps you to see better your own work. We all have our own biases, so viewing our work through others' eyes is very helpful. It's um, supportive also. We don't do the um, mean critiques like I went through in graduate school. That's another story for another time, okay? I don't think they do that as much as they used to. Anyway, thank you for being here. Go to the studio. Painting is a practice. Practice makes perfect. Okay, see you, see you next week.